and welcome to Note with Hannah. I'm Hannah, we're going to look at storing your yarn today. I've got some tips of best practices for you. Hi and welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah, I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. Let's look at storing your yarn today. Now you may have already heard about the yarn declutter, if not, check out the link in the description below that you can join us, it's starting this week. We're going to spend all of April decluttering yarn. Doesn't that sound fun? I bet you've got a lot of yarn stash, maybe you've got a little bit, maybe you've got a lot, and you just sometimes need to go through it and check it out, see whether you want some of it still, whether some of it has just had enough. So we're going to look at that over April. Do sign up, like I said, the link is in the description below and I'll be sending you emails all through April with lots of little tasks to do. So yes, we're going to talk about yarn storage a lot in there, but I'm going to give you some tips now. First of all, I suggest you kind of break it up into groups. Now you can do this in various ways. The first way might be to break it up into the manufacturers. You may use a lot of Noro stock yarn, you may use a lot of Drops design yarn, you may use Rowan or Sublime or Serdar. If you separate them out into different manufacturers, then you'll know which one is coming from which bag. If you're very into understanding which yarn comes from which manufacturer, this may be a great way for you to do it. Then you could organise it by purpose. Do you have lots of baby yarns, maybe sock yarns? Maybe you have cotton and bamboo yarns that you use to knit up dishcloths if you're selling them perhaps. That can be really, really helpful to just say, well, I'm knitting this, so I need to go into that stash. Knitting this, I need to go into that box. That can be really helpful if that's how you knit as well. Another option is to go to fibres and say, I'm splitting them up, so I've got mohair there, 100% wool there, acrylic mix there, and cotton and bamboos in another place. Because if you've got a lot, then it can be, again, that can be really helpful. So you maybe will only really attack a cotton and bamboo yarn in the summer but then you'll want the mohair and the 100% wool another time of year. And that could be an ideal option for you. Then, if you'd actually like to display the yarn that you've got, how about organising it by colour? You could have a whole rainbow of yarn sat there, ready and waiting for you. If you look at the Pinterest board, that again I will link below, it's going to give you really great ideas on how to show off your yarn. And sorting it by colour is a really great way to do that. You'll know what it is because you can actually see it, so it won't matter if it's a bit mixed up in other ways. But by having it by colour, you know which one you're going to at which times. So, if we're talking about best practices for organising your yarn, let's talk about the stuff we don't like to talk about. How to prevent moths. I have never really had a big issue with this. I had moths at one point last year in my little basket of scarves. That I know is because it was pretty much undisturbed for about nine months. I just left it there without going through it, without washing any of it, and it just sat there. So I looked at it at the beginning of the winter and realised I had holes in my scarves. Let's go through some ideas on how you can prevent moths so the larvae don't actually sit there and eat through your finish nets or indeed your yarn. So the first thing is, we don't use mothballs anymore. They're actually toxic. So if you have any, then work out how you can dispose of those safely and don't use them anymore because they're not safe to have in the house. We now use, we're going back to the original ideas. We're using cedar wood. You can actually find a blanket box made of cedar wood, then that would be brilliant. You can actually buy balls of cedar wood now. Go and look on go and look on a lot of the yarn stores and you'll be able to find them there a lot of the home product stores either in store or online will have them available too the other thing that you could actually do is make some make up some lavender bags putting lavender in amongst your yarn is going to deter moths really really well um, it's just one of those smells that they don't like so you could even knit up some little pouches and put some lavender in that. If you have lavender in the garden, you just need to buy yourself a bunch in the summer and just fill up some pouches, um, either cotton pouches. Indeed, you could even buy you can even buy lavender pouches either from Etsy that someone else has made or just from a general store as well. Now, if you already have moths, there is something else you can do, 
and that is actually freeze the yarn or the finished knits that you have already if they haven't been eaten already. This is just to make sure that they don't eat through anything that's there and it will actually kill them. So just put what you want to, um, what you want to cleanse in a plastic bag into the freezer and leave it there for 24 or 36 hours. Take it out of the freezer again and it will be fine. It's not going to freeze or get covered in ice crystals or anything. It will just be very cold when you get it out again, but the larvae does not like that. So that's one way to make sure that the yarn, if some of your yarn has been eaten up, then the rest of it, you can just send it through the freezer, maybe over a week, one bag at a time. Then you can be rest assured that none of your other yarn will get eaten as well. I also suggest that you clean out your yarn regularly. Like we're doing this month with the yarn declutter, it can be really, really helpful to just go through it, let the light into it, move it around, vacuum out the boxes or the shelves where you've got all your yarn. Make sure you do good dust too. That will just open up the yarn to light and it will get rid of anything that's just sat there stagnating. So once you're pretty sure that you don't have moths, then I suggest just separating your yarn into bags. I use drawstring bags and I use cotton shopping bags and I put my yarn in them and then I store it in larger boxes to just prevent it from getting too mixed up to start with and then it really does prevent it from getting dusty and uh, fingers crossed that also prevents the moths from getting into all of it if the moths just get into one piece. Okay, so that's yarn storage for you. Separate it out into smaller bags and then into the big box. Separate it out as you choose. Like I said, you can do it by manufacturer, by purpose, by um, fiber, all sorts of different ways, by color maybe. And you choose where you want to store it. We're going through all of the options in the yarn declutter, so do go and join us for that. Because we're gonna take all of April to declutter rather than just doing it in a massive clear out over one weekend. It will mean that you've got time to process exactly what you've got, you can think about it, and you can just make the decision over time, which means you're less likely to make decisions that you'll regret. You may be thinking in a month's time, oh, I wish I'd kept that yarn that I threw out. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you'll sign up for the declutter below. The link is there ready and waiting for you. I think I will see you for that in the Facebook group if you'd like to join us. And again, of course, I will see you next week for yet another Knit with Hannah YouTube video. Thanks so much for joining me this week. Bye for now. Happy knitting.